it's time to tell you all the story of when I got arrested when I was in Japan. And I know, me arrested, Mr. Goody Two Shoes, wouldn't harm a fly. But yeah, let me tell you all about the time that I got arrested while I was living in Japan. A lot of people don't even know that I lived in Japan, but I was a military kid. My parents were in the military, we moved around a lot, and Japan was the place where I lived for an extended period of time. So it was just me and my mom. This is the time that I got arrested, by the way. No more backstory, you know, no more origin stories. It was just me and my mom living together in Japan. We lived on a naval base. I was the kid with the G-Shock watch. Yeah, I was that kid in school. I was the G-Shock watch kid. And I love that watch. It was a nice $50 black watch I always wore on my left wrist. When I was taking a shower, I would wear it. When I would go to school, I would wear it. When I would go to sleep, I would wear it. When I'd go on dates with your mom, I would wear it. Like, I would wear it. 24 7 i love that freaking watch but the watch broke one day probably because i used it so much so my mom bought me another one we went to the store we bought a 50 dollars g-shock watch and i was happy again i was on cloud nine i was like yeah boy i got my g-shock gonna get zero ladies with it but you know what it still looks cool i still know the time all that stuff <laughs> what am i even talking about Okay, no more jokes, no more jokes. Time to get serious again. But yeah, we went to the store. My mom got me a $50 G-Shock watch. I was super happy about it. And not even 24 hours later, I had a basketball game to go to. One of the things that they don't allow you to do when you play a game is they don't allow you to have any jewelry on and any accessory. So I had to take off my watch and I put it in my backpack. And I had one of my friends watch over my bag for me because he didn't play basketball like that. So he was in the stands with the backpack on. And after the game, I was like, all right, you know, time to get my clothes and time to put on my other shoes and leave. And I couldn't find my watch inside the bag. And now that I think about it, I'm pretty sure my friend stole that shit. So, hey, if you're watching this, I want my watch back. <laughs> Yeah, I'm pretty sure he stole that shit. But, you know, the story was, was that he put the bag down and there was no more watch to be found. There was no watch in the bag. Like, it just mysteriously <laughs> disappeared. It, it unzipped itself and it just walked out, basically, you know? On, on the strap of its, uh, of its watch, it just, it just kind of flopped out. I have no idea, but that's the story that he told me. And being the dumbass gullible kid that I was, I was like, all right, you know what? I am so screwed because my mom just bought me this watch and I was begging her to replace my old one, the one that I wore 24 seven. I begged her, I was like, mom, please. If there's one thing that I would want in this world, it's to get this damn watch. And she got it for me. And the fact that I lost it like less than 24 hours later on some ho shit, like I don't even know how I lost it. Like I said, honestly, I think my friends jacked that shit, but you know what, that's beside the point. That's not the main point of the story. The main point was that I was scared to tell my mom. I was scared to tell my mom. So I thought of something, you know, some Dr. Evil type shit. I was like, hmm. How am I gonna get that watch back? Like, I literally only get like five, ten dollars of lunch money every day. I could save up, but I'm like, I love to eat. There's one thing that I love more than I watch and it's food. So I'm like, okay, there's no way I'm gonna save any money. The only thing that I can do that I can think of as a kid would be to steal that shit. I gotta go back to the store and I gotta steal that freaking watch. But you all know me. You all know I'm a goody two shoes. I can't do any of those things. I have morals, you know? There's an aura about me, this light aura. <laughs> I don't even believe myself when I say that. Basically, I was too much of a little bitch to steal the watch myself. So I was, I think, in ninth or 10th grade. So I was about 14 or 15 years old. And I was like, damn, I really don't wanna tell my mom I lost this watch. So one of my friends, he knew that I needed a watch. I mean, he didn't know that I needed a watch. He knew that I needed that watch, the G-Shock watch. And I'll never forget this because this was the start of my downfall. He came up to me and he came close to my ear and he was like, hey, uh, I can help you get that watch back. We're gonna go to the store together on this day and we're gonna get that watch together, all right? So I was like, you know what, whatever. This dude is willing to risk it all to help me. So I was like, all right, let's do it. After school, we're gonna go to the store together. We're gonna steal the watch. I'm gonna act like, you know, I never lost a watch in the first place. Cause it was literally the next day. It was the next day at school and then we came up with that plan. I don't remember if we went exactly that day. We probably went the very next day, 
But I remember it wasn't too much long after that conversation where we went to get the watch. Anyway, we went to the store and we walked in. And the dumbest thing thinking back was that we were so obviously suspicious that it just didn't make any sense. We walked in there, I believe it was springtime. We walked in with like big bubble jackets, you know, on some like weird shit. And we walked in there, you know, looking around, seeing if there was any cameras that we can be suspicious for. And we saw like the, the display thing of watches, you know, the one that kind of rotates. I don't know what that shit's called. I'm too dumb to know what they're called, but we saw the watches. And I was just pretending, you know? I put on my Leonardo DiCaprio and I was like, hmm, which watch do I want? Knowing damn well I was eyeing the G-Shock watch that was just rotating in there. And we pulled the G-Shock out from the display case. This was before I think they had the keys to lock it. So we could just open it up and then we can grab the watch and take it off the little stand thing that it's on. We were just pretending that we were looking at it as we were walking around the store. And I'll never forget this part because this is the part that <laughs> plays in my mind every time I think about this whole watch story. So we go to the underwear section. Two ninth graders, two ninth, tenth graders walking to the underwear section together. Pretending we're looking at some Calvin Kleins, all right? We're just looking at underwear, just standing there, right? Rows and rows of underwear. All the while, we have our hands under the thing, and he's putting it in like a, like a inner zipper thing in his jacket. So we're just looking down like this, pretending that we're looking at the underwear, but he's like, you know what, I'm gonna put it right here, I'm gonna put it right here. And he's just pointing, he's not talking because he doesn't wanna be loud because there's other people shopping around us. And I was like, okay. Let's just, let's just do that. Keep it right there. And then I'll just buy some bullshit ass drink, like a 90 cent drink because I didn't have that much money. So I remember um, he put the, the watch in there. We were at the underwear section probably for a few minutes because we were kind of hesitating because there was people walking around and we didn't want to look too suspicious, but we obviously looked super suspicious. So, you know, he was kind of hesitating putting the watch inside of his jacket. So once he was done doing that, I just randomly went to the drinks all the way across the other side of the store and I just grabbed the random drink, paid for it, and then we walked out. And as we walked out, we're like, yeah, okay, I see you, my G. You really bought that life. But as soon as we walk out the store, those sliding doors, they open, it was like, oh, boom, a guy comes out. He just comes between us like this. And he was like, so, where'd you put the watch out, boys? <laughs> I don't know exactly when I hit puberty in my life, but at that moment, I can tell you that my balls dropped to the floor because I was like, oh shit. Like my voice has never been that deep, but it was deep in that moment. I was like, oh fuck. So what happened was the guy was following us around the store the entire time. Cause I guess, you know, two dudes walking around in bubble jackets and shopping for underwear right after school together was not something that normal kids do. They usually go out to eat, go play sports, go home, do homework, play video games, whatever. Two dudes in bubble jackets shopping for underwear. That's not the norm. He asked us where we put the watch. Obviously, you're gonna play dumb. You're gonna be like, what are you talking about, dude? Like, I don't even know you. Like, get out of my face before, you know, I call the police, stop touching me. This guy was just like, we have you on camera. We know that you took the watch. We know that there's a missing watch from the display case. You were two were the last people to have it. At this point, my heart's beating so fast. Like on some real shit, no more joking around. My heart was beating so fast. It was like, doom, 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 doom. Like, what do I do? And I remember my friend, he was looking at me because the guy was in front leading us back into the store. He opens his jacket and he unzips it and he grabs the watch and he kind of like does this tossing motion like he's gonna throw it, right? He does this tossing motion like he's just gonna throw it somewhere, but there's nowhere to throw it because, you know, it's just like a walkway back into the store. So if he throws it somewhere, it's obviously gonna be seen. So I was just going like this. I was doing like that, like looking at him from the side and I was like, no, 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 don't, don't do that because he's obviously gonna see us. I was trying to tell him once we get in the store, just like toss it somewhere, you know, just throw it because that's the best thing we can do. That's the only way to get out of it. But. Once we got in there, something came over him. He gave the watch to the guy. He said, here, here's the watch. I was like, oh God, we are so freaking screwed. So he leads us to the back. There's just one singular TV that he plays back. It shows me and him from like a almost aerial view, looking at each other in the underwear section, 
like looking like we're fiddling with something, you know? Looking like we're having a dick measuring contest or something. We're just both looking down and we're uh, obviously stealing something. So he was like, was this where you stole it? The person in me that just wants this all to be over, I was like, yeah. Uh, I lost the watch and I had no money to get a watch. So I just wanted to replace it before my mom got mad at me. And obviously this guy's like, this kid needs to shut his ass up. I already called the police. I don't care about your sob story. So just wait here, just wait here and we'll take care of it. I don't know why this happened looking back now that I'm much older now, but they actually brought two policemen in that were um, part of the military base because the place that we were at was a military base and they brought out the handcuffs and they told me to put both hands behind my back and then they told my friend to put both hands behind his back and we just heard the handcuffs just like wrapping onto our wrists. They were cold and they were heavy. I was like, are you serious? Over this watch? Are you, are you kidding me, my guy? So we had both hands behind our back. We had an officer that was kind of leading us. Like he had one hand on our back and then um, he was kind of leading us outside. So many people were watching. The place where we lived wasn't big. So all of like the, the parents from the school and people my mom knew and knew me, they saw me and the guy come out and they were just like, wow. Like what the hell did they do? Little did they know that we just stole a watch. I mean, it's not just a watch, we did steal at the end of the day. But like I said, looking back, I'm like, it was a watch and we didn't get away with it. We gave the watch back, but they arrested us and took us out in front of everybody, put us in the back of a police van together. We didn't go in a police car. We went in like a back of a police van and it was two officers and me and my friend looking at each other while we were handcuffed. And we both looked like we were about to cry. You know, I'm a G so I don't cry, but we look like we're about to cry. So we go to this police station that I've never seen in my entire life. I didn't even know it existed. We sat down in one of those rooms like in the movies. I swear to God, we sit down in one of those rooms that looked like they were in the movie with uh, that two way mirror type shit. And then a table and then just one chair on each side. And then I was sitting there for the longest time and they were like, okay, um, can we have somebody to contact? Like, is there a phone number? And I gave my mom's cell phone number. And like, I don't remember how long it was. I just remember in my mind thinking, what's gonna happen? Cause when you're that young, you don't know what's gonna happen. You don't know the consequences of your actions or how long something like that's gonna be punishable for. So I waited for what felt like an eternity. And then my mom comes in and I knew how she was gonna act. I knew how she was gonna react because this is why I stole the watch in the first place. Like my whole life, she's been disappointed in me. So I'm like, oh God, <laughs> like I already know what's gonna happen. She's not gonna say anything in public. She's not gonna like scold me in front of everybody. But once we get home, and <laughs> hey, once we get home, you know what I'm saying? it's a different story. So she just, she just comes in all stoic, you know, has nothing to say. And she's just there with her bag and her, you know, her outfit from work. And she said, so what's gonna happen to my son? And the guy said, well, we're gonna figure it out. We're gonna, we're gonna figure out like, what is the right sentence for him? Because this is his first time. It's uncharacteristic of him to steal. He doesn't have a history of doing this. So we just wanna know why. And then I told them why. I told them that I just got this watch that I loved and it was gone and I didn't wanna disappoint my mom. So I stole the watch and I said it was my idea and they were writing everything down. And then they told me that they'll contact me. I got to go home with my mom and they told me that they'll contact me. So eventually, I don't know how much longer later it was, they call me and my friend who stole the watch into the main office of the school. And they tell us that the officers that were involved and the store that was involved figured out a sentence for me and him. So what it was, was that I had to do 60 hours of community service and my friend who stole the watch had to do 50 hours. I had to do 10 extra hours because I was the mastermind. Like I was the one who decided, hey, we're gonna steal this watch. And he was the one who's like, okay, I'll steal the watch, but it was your idea. So, you know, it is what it is. Like that was the consequence. And I will say that I've never stolen again. I've never stolen again from any store. And I did all 60 hours of community service. I had to pick up cigarette butts. I had to pick up trash around the entire area, like from I think eight in the morning 
to 12 in the afternoon, that was how many hours I had to work every single weekend. So I never had weekends to play with friends, to do anything. I had to do community service until it added up to 60 total hours. And it made me think a lot. You know, it made me think that I should have just told my mom about what happened with the watch. I should have just been honest with her. When you're in the moment, you know, you feel like you're gonna shit bricks because you don't know what's gonna happen. Like, you feel like you just got arrested for murder and you're gonna go to prison for like a year or two. I mean, not for murder, but I'm saying like, I'm gonna go to prison for stealing. You know what I mean. I'm not saying that you go to prison for whatever. Basically what I'm trying to say is that once you're in the moment and you get caught, you feel like your life is over. So what I'm trying to tell you is that if you are ever in a situation like me, where your parents or someone you know or love got you something and you lost it, don't try to do something that's not legal to make things right. I think you should just be honest about it. Something that maybe I wouldn't go back in time and correct because I feel like going through that experience made me learn and, and made me grow because you know I would never steal again. And I would just be straight up if something happened like that again, I'd be like, hey, you know what? I'm sorry, I know you got me this awesome gift and I know that you know you spent your hard earned money on it, but I lost it and I apologize. So yeah, that's my story of when I got arrested when I was living in Japan. Um, hopefully this was an interesting story to you all. I've seen somebody commenting that they want me to tell stories of my experiences in Japan. I do have a lot more to tell. Oh man, that's cap. I do have like a few more to tell. <laughs> And I do have a lot of life stories that I want to tell, but I don't know if anybody will be interested in them. If you are and you enjoyed this video, let me know in the comment section more stories of my life that you want to hear about. But if you enjoyed this video, make sure you give it one big fat like and tell a friend today that Jay from the Cub Scouts is that dude!